that coming Try it.
turn in your Bibles with me to the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew, the 28th chapter, and the 8th through the 15th verses. Matthew, 28th chapter, and the 8th through the 15th verses. If you can stand for the reading and reverence of God's word. Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 8th through the 15th verses. And it reads as such. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this, report gets, if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word.
say hallelujah. hallelujah. Grab your Bibles and hold them up for me. If you don't have one, grab a pew Bible in front of you. Hold it up. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my guide to living. Louder. This is my Bible. This is my guide to living. Amen. You turn with me again to the 28th chapter of Matthew and uh, and uh, if you turn it uh, there go to the eighth verse again of course I'm concentrating on verses 11 through 15 but I'd like to read the passage again I want to thank uh, Reverend Willie Bodrick for his insightful reading of the scripture if you have a pew Bible, it's on page 1553. And if you have it, please stand. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on the way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. Mm. 
if this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. If I had a subject for you, it would be, the truth is. Look at your neighbor and say, the truth is. Look at another neighbor and say, the real truth is. Shall we pray? Speak, Lord. We thy servants hear thee. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you're our strength and you are our redeemer. And let the people of God say together, amen. amen. You may be seated. I broke down yesterday and finally watched the movie Black Mass. I, I really didn't want to watch that movie. I don't need to know about the glories of Whitey Bulger and South Boston. I'll leave that to some other folk. But I decided to watch the movie because of our text this morning. Because uh, as I spoke to my brother some weeks ago, when he asked me if, he, if I watched it, I said, no, I'm not going to watch that movie. I, I, I lived through it. There's nothing in the movie that I need to know or really want to know. But when the Lord impressed this text on me yesterday, I said, let me watch this movie of this, of this man by the name of James Whitey Bulger, who had a friend in the FBI by the name of John Conley. Bulger was this rising gangster. Conley was this ambitious FBI agent. And they got together and decided to cut a deal. And so on the surface, what you saw was the FBI taking down a major crime family in the North End the Angelo family, and this South Boston gentleman rising in the underworld and becoming an underworld superstar, if there's anything called that. But then the movie ends with a Globe paper coming out that says that James the White, Whitey Bulger was an informant for the FBI. So they conspired together, the government and criminals, to give the appearance that the government was doing its job by taking down crime but on the underhand, somebody say underhand, there were some folk who were still robbing, stealing, killing, and taking from folk, as criminals do. And so you had a, a kingpin who became a kingpin because he manipulated the government and you had the government who gave approval to the kingpin. Now, it reminds me of our text this morning. We have this early Sunday morning experience where the women go to the tomb. And as they're going to the tomb, they, they're going to anoint the body. And if you look at Matthew 28, it says that there was a violent earthquake. 
For the angel of the Lord had come down and rolled back the stone. And, and when they saw that the stone was rolled away, they saw an angel in there whose appearance was white as snow. The text will tell you that the guards who were guarding the tomb were so afraid that, that they were rendered unconscious. I love the way the King James says they became as dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Come see the place where he lay. And when they saw the place in which he was laid, they were rejoicing. They, they ran away. They were afraid, but they were rejoicing. And then in the midst of it, Jesus appeared. They worshiped him. He said, it's all right. It's going to be all right. Don't you, don't you want to have Jesus say to you, it's going to be all right? Yeah. Yeah. He said, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee that they will see me. Hmm. And then the text gets a little deeper. While they were on the way, the guards, more than likely the guards who had fainted at the tomb, uh, went and reported to the chief priests. If you remember the story, these guards were appointed to the chief priests by Pilate to make sure nothing would happen to the grave because they heard the rumors of the third day. So now the guards are going to the chief priests saying, we in trouble. We were supposed to guard this tomb. Yeah. Nothing was supposed to happen. Then this, this, this earthquake happens. This angel came down and, and we fainted. <laughs> the chief priests went to the elders and they got together. And they put together a plan and they came back and they had a large sum of money and they said, look, this is how we're going to do it. Tell folk that the disciples came during the night and stole him away while you all were asleep. And now if this gets to the governor that, that, that the body is missing and the guards who were supposed to guard him uh, uh, didn't do their job, we'll go to the governor ourselves, go to Pilate, and we'll, and we'll say to him, look, 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 this, this is what actually happened, and, and, and it's going to be all right. And we'll satisfy him so that y'all won't get in any trouble. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And, you know, so I, I, I saw this movie, Black Mass, and now I'm looking at another kind of black mass where we have uh, these folk who uh, were against Jesus and, and, and cannot get away from the fact that the tomb is empty now deciding to create a story that they hope will plausibly uh, get into the minds of folk so that they will believe that story instead of the real story. And, and so when I, when I saw that, I, I, I said, all right, I, I think I got my, my text. I thank the Lord that he gave it to me the day before. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we got to understand always in this Christian life, that, 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 that because the gospel is so powerful, there are always going to be folk who are going to try to bring a counter gospel. Come on, somebody. And so I got three lessons for you uh, uh, this morning, and, and I'm hungry too. I want some bacon. So, so the first lesson is this. We always have to remember that, that we cannot mistake the gospel mm -hmm. for the politics of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Can I say that again? Come on now. We, we don't want to mistake the gospel for the politics of the gospel. You see, there were these facts. Fact number one, that, that the stone was rolled away. Fact 
number two, that the tomb was empty. Fact number three, that the gods in some way fell asleep. They took those facts and created a whole new story from those facts. Uh, we got to remember that, that we always have to beware of a gospel that's based on spin. That we got to remember that, 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 that the facts can always add up to a different story. We know that in the church. I always wonder how folk who all have the same facts at heart would go into a church meeting Oh, y'all ain't awake right now? I'm, let me wake you up a little bit. You go into a church meeting and there'd be so much politicking and arguing, not, not here at 12. Let me, let me talk about the other churches, is that all right? So much intrigue and, and so many camps and it's all in the name of Jesus. I'm always wondering how it is we got the same Bible, pray to the same God, and still come to church on Sunday, and oftentimes the same church, and still got this click here, and this click there, and here click, there click, everywhere click, click. I'm always wondering about how it is that, that, that we do that because there's a difference between the gospel and the politics of the gospel. See, my Bible tells me that when church folk are in trouble, the thing that we shouldn't do is try to outsmart one another or try to outspin one another or, or try to outbible one another. When, when Peter was in jail and when they were about to kill him, my Bible says that the church got together and prayed. I know, I know it's 6 a.m. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. At least say amen, somebody say amen. I, you know, I'm, I, there's always the, the gospel and the politics of the gospel. There's always the spin. That's why I'm looking at this, this political climate that we're in right now. And I'm, I'm all, I'm, the, Barack Obama was one, is, is the most consequential president that we've had in modern times. He took this nation out of the doldrums of a depression where the whole world was about to pack it up. Whole industries were collapsing and he brings it all out. That alone is a consequence. But then he ushered in universal health care. Uh, and anybody who did not have health care, who now has health care, ought to thank God for what? And now we've got this election cycle going on and these jokers are walking around telling folk that, 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 that Barack Obama was the worst president and folk believe it. And what, what, and what is amazing to me is that they believe that and Donald Trump over Barack Obama. All I'm trying to tell you is that you gotta be careful with the facts and about how people try to spin it up into a different kind of story. Uh, you know, truth be told, you gotta watch that uh, when you watch that TV gospel. Come on, somebody. I ain't looking at nobody because I'm figuring somebody in here watch it. I, I'm, not, I'm just looking at the lights right now. You know, there's a whole lot of spin going on out there. Right, I'm gonna leave it alone. Huh? I smell that bacon cooking right now. So the second point I want to make, and, and this is the one I've, I've been trying to wrestle with how to say this, uh, I, and, 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 it's, and it stems on that verse 12 where, where the elders, they got together and they devised a plan, and then they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. So the story that they created was based 
in part on the money that was received. Money gave power to the story. And so, so I, I, I don't know how to say this, but I think the best way to say it is like this. Money does not determine the gospel or the success of the gospel. Can I say it like that? Money does not determine the success of the gospel. Now, if you're a trustee, I, I understand this might make you a little uneasy. Come on, somebody. Because we, we take our money here in the church. But, 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 but the success of the gospel is not dependent upon the size of the church budget. Can I say that again? The, the, the success of the gospel is not determined upon the amount of property the church owns. The success of the gospel is not determined uh, on the size of the sanctuary, uh, the numbers of ministers that are on the rostrum, uh, the size of the paid staff of the church. Uh, the, as I understand the gospel, the, the, the success of the gospel only depends upon the power of one name. I, I, I get worried about folk who look at, at, at the money piece and, and, and they try to, uh, uh, you know, determine that, that, that the, the, the success of the ministry is dependent upon how much money we take in. Now, that's not to say we ought not to take in money. Uh, trustees are now going, oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> Uh, we, we don't take in money uh, so to, to power the success of the men. We do it because God mandates us to give. It's, it's, a, it's a godly mandate. Uh, but, but, but the success of, of the gospel is not dependent upon any amount of money that comes into the church. Uh, uh, you know, there, there, there are folk who will talk about uh, great ministries, large and small, and when they talk about it, they immediately start talking about the things that the ministry possesses uh. or, or the size of the budget. Uh. I just want you to know the devil is a liar. Mm. It, it's not about that. I get worried when I see preachers on TV talking about, I'll give you a bigger blessing or you will receive a bigger blessing if you give more money. Come on, somebody. The devil is a liar. Uh, the honest truth is that the gospel is free. You, you don't have to pay for, for Jesus. All you have to do is submit yourself to the Almighty One. And, and guess what? The healing that the Lord gives is not dependent upon the amount of money you paid for the blessing cloth, but, but it comes from the Spirit of God who comes down and touches your body. I know I got a witness from somebody out there. If you are looking for the Lord to save you from your bills, uh, I wouldn't be looking for any preacher to ask you to, get, to give him money before you get saved from your, why don't you just pray? Prayer is free. You can get down on your knees and ask the Lord to deliver you. Come on, somebody. The gospel is free. It's not dependent upon money. I get tired of that. I, I, you know, money manipulates. You know, I've seen it happen in churches where, where, where uh, uh, you've got uh, uh, lay leaders who, who manipulate a pastor. Oh, y'all, I don't want to talk about that, but, 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 that, but they do that. They, 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 they control the, uh, you know, the money uh, on the salary. Come on. Uh, and they say, well, since we pay you, pastor, you ought to be doing all of these things because we pay you, pastor. Oh, okay, I'm gonna leave it alone, I know. I, I don't want the eggs to get dry right now. I know they're out there. All I'm trying to tell you this morning is that when it comes to money, you need to be careful. Money can be funny. 
in the hands of the people of God. Come on, somebody. You better be careful about when folks say uh, uh, you got so much and then they produce the cash because the gospel is not based on cash. You can spend anything if you got enough money. Come on, somebody. Uh, look at Donald Trump. You could even run for president of the United States. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm, gonna, I'm done. I know. I know. I know somebody's saying, leave Donald Trump alone. Huh? The last point I want to make, last point I want to make, has to do with the last verse. Verse 15, so the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And the story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. I always laugh when I see that verse because for some of you, this might be the first time you ever heard this story. If, if you don't read your Bible a lot, it's the first time you've probably ever seen the fact that chief priests and, and uh, uh, the, uh, the elders got together and, and grabbed the soldiers and devised this story. Uh, because that's not the story that's widely circulated today. And that leads me to my first point. A lie always points to death. But the truth, the truth is, the truth is the light. And as I look at uh, this 15th verse, I start laughing because, you know, they, they really did pay for this story. And, and if this story would have worked, then the two men who were on the road to Emmaus would not have had a visitor show up as they were walking. And, and as they brought them to the house and as he broke bread and, and disappeared, they would not have said, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked along the way? If, if this story would have worked, there wouldn't have been 120 people in an upper room some weeks later. And as they prayed during a festival time, something that looked like cloven tongues of fire a lit upon their heads. And a sound came like a mighty rushing wind. Uh, if it wouldn't have worked, then the Holy Ghost wouldn't have come into the world. If, if the story would have worked, then Peter would not have gotten up and said, let me get you an understanding about what you see right now. And after he preached that sermon, my Bible says over 3,000 people were baptized. If the story would have worked, then Paul wouldn't have been knocked off his donkey in the Damascus road. And a voice sounded from heaven, said, Paul, Paul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the priest. Listen to me. If the story would have worked, then when I was sick in bed, and when the doctor said, I don't know if you're going to be able to get well, when I turned to the wall and asked the Lord to heal my body, then my body would not have been healed. If the story would have worked, when I found myself in trouble, I called on the name of the Lord. And if the story worked, the Lord would not have delivered me. I know I got a witness in this place. Somebody in this sanctuary who can say with unequivocation, if the story would have worked, God wouldn't have touched your body. God wouldn't have saved your soul. God wouldn't have made you whole. God wouldn't have healed your body. God wouldn't have healed your family. God wouldn't have delivered you. God wouldn't have lifted you. Somebody say yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth is, he's alive. The truth is, he reigned. The truth is, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Can I 
get a witness? Somebody say yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Better watch that spin out there. Mm. Better watch that money. Mm. Anybody can put a lie together. But the truth endures to the end. The truth is I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. No matter what anybody says. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. Just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know that he holds the future. Life is worth it. I said life is worth it. It's worth the living just because he lives. Shall we stand together? Hymn number 281. Because he lives. God said his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. The few. 